Hey, it's Kim Commando Explains. We're talking about digital photos. I mean, how do you hide sensitive photos? How do you make sure you don't lose any? How do you scan the important ones? So this is gonna be an amazing episode. You, you don't wanna miss a second of it, I swear. And joining me here on Kim Commando Explains is Allie Seligman, our amazing content queen. Hello there, Allie. Hi, Kim. And then also, of course, our trusty news director and our bonafide geek of the week, it is, of course, Ben Bradley, who promises he's not going to be talking about any batteries, right? But today, Ben, no battery talk. I don't remember promising that, but uh, uh, oh. I'll try. I'll try. That's best I can do. For the uninitiated, Ben, I don't know what it is about this guy. He just loves batteries and flashlights and jumpers. I'm like, come on, Ben. <laughs> we got to get out of this rut. All right, so let's get this party started, right? We're going to talk about first downloading photos off of Facebook because let's just face it, everybody has a Facebook account and everybody has photos. And if you don't want to just leave your photos on Facebook, you have to get them off the site. So, Allie, walk us through where do you even start? That is a good question. There are several ways to do this. And really, it came to mind for so many of us when Facebook went down for, what, not even a full day recently, but we all panicked, right? Oh, my gosh, oh, Facebook's gone. What are we going to do? What are we yeah. Well, um, at first, yes, you need to make sure you have your photos saved somewhere other than Facebook. There are a few ways to do it. Some are more complicated than others. Now, you can do this full, detailed download everything you've ever posted to Facebook, your photos, your videos, all your posts, everything. And you can export it to a place like Dropbox or whatever storage you use. I'm not going to go through all the steps to do that here because there are too many. You're not going to remember. But I will tell you how to just download your photos because that's actually pretty darn simple. So you're going to go to your profile and then you just click a photo album. So, you know, find your favorites. Maybe you do this with all your photo albums, probably your best bet. At the top, there's one of those little three dot menus. So you click that, and then there's an option that says download album. That's it. That's all oh, you have to do. My gosh, sometimes things make sense. Right? right? Actually just, an easy setting in oh. Facebook. It's incredible. So yeah, go do this. It's really worth doing. You don't want to leave something there, you know, whether it's Facebook is down or you just don't want all your photos in Facebook anymore. It makes it a lot easier to delete your account if you don't feel like all your stuff is hostage. You know, speaking of this, I always get calls and emails from people about Facebook photos. And like the whole common question is like, there's this photo of my child or grandchild on Facebook and I want to be able to print it. But when I downloaded it, it's only 75 DPI, which we'll talk about in just say. So is there any way I can make this photo bigger so that I can get a big eight by 10? And the answer, Allie, is... Oh, probably blah, blah. not. It depends, right? Yeah. So sometimes something that people do, you're not really thinking and you download the thumbnail and you're not actually downloading the entire picture. So first step, make sure you click into the picture. You'll see the full size one there. But really your best bet is probably just asking that family member, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey, do you have a higher quality version of that? And they can send it right to do you. Do they have to talk to them if they do that? I think they could just text, right? <laughs> they could just text. I mean, we don't really. They can text. Just we don't want to really text. Yep. Send a screenshot. Say, hey, send me the file. Thanks. And you know, Allie, there you, you mentioned being able to download everything that you do on Facebook. And it is. It's a lot of steps in which, you know, the only problem we talk about steps on podcasts is like, ooh, where did I go? And what should I do with that? And so over at commando.com, there's this wonderful little feature called, drum roll please, bum ba -da bum search, right? There's a search box. And so if you're looking for something like, how do I download my entire Facebook history, you can go ahead and do that. But let me give just one more tip about searching in sites. Over on Google, if you go to it, using Google, you can type in, in the address bar, site colon commando.com. And then you can type in, whatever your search phrase is. And Google will search the entire site. And what's really cool is that you get only the search results from commando.com. That also works on other sites. But of course, we always want you to just search commando.com, of course. You know, and, and all this reminds me of just something. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but what did Cinderella say when her phone got destroyed by the wicked stepmother and she lost all of her photos? No idea. I know what. Someday my prince will come. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. That was pretty good. <laughs> all right. That was good. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about scanning, okay? Because we always have all these old photos and maybe you have them rotten away in a shoebox, a frame, or even a photo album, which that was really interesting to me because when 
Barry's father passed away, he had photos and frames hanging on the wall. And then when I took the photos off the wall, there were like six to 10 pictures in that frame. It was really amazing. So if, if you have any older relatives and you're cleaning out their house, make sure that you actually open up the back of the frame because you may have some hidden gems in there. But it's a huge task getting all your old photos scanned and uploaded to your photo cloud storage account. And so let me tell you, for this, it's really hard to be a dedicated photo scanner for the job. But what if you simply have a photo of your dad in his brand new car or that bad childhood haircut? Okay. Did you guys have any bad childhood haircut? <laughs> of course. We all had questionable bangs I in the was 90s. the fifth beetle. <laughs> Were you the fifth beetle? Okay. I, you know, for some reason, my aunt had a beauty salon and she did my hair for my sister's wedding. And I guess I was probably, I don't know, seven or eight at the time. And I had a full permanent. <laughs> <laughs> that is not I a good look. Like, <laughs> no, I looked like a sponge. You know, it's just, I saw an article really... online that perms are coming back, but for boys. Oh, for boys? Yeah. I'll, I'll send you really? link. It's hilarious. Oh, okay. Perms. All right. So anyway, back to scanning. Uh, you want to get the free photo scan app from Google. With it, you can use your phone's camera to capture photos and frames. And that's terrific because you don't get all the glare. It's also terrific to use with photo albums. Why? Because you don't need to take the photo out of the album to get the shot. So in just a few seconds, you get this photo, like glare-free. It's automatically cropped, enhanced, and rotated. Yeah, it does all of that, except, I don't know, give you more hair or make your thighs thinner. But you'll find the free PhotoScan app in the Apple App Store or Google Play. Again, it's called the PhotoScan app. It's from Google. All right, so maybe you're giving some photo gifts this year, and maybe you're going to be printing out your photos yourself. I mean, here you want to use something like the Epson Fast Photo Scanner, especially with old photos, because you can scan up to 50 photos a minute, and it comes with just a slew of tools to repair the photos, too. Now, when you want to print or scan photos, there's something called DPI. Okay. Anybody? Anybody? DPI? Oh, I know you know this. Dots per inch. It's important. Now, when the images are on the web, the DPI can actually work against you. So you might be thinking like, oh, Kim, I know the answer for this. The higher the DPI, the better off I am. Hmm. It depends. When you're printing a photo, 300 DPI is going to give you this really nice, glossy, standardized, standard sized photo. And when you're scanning an old photo, you want to jump that, you want to pump that DPI to at least 600. You can go higher, like 1200, but really the file size is going to be huge, going to take more storage space, longer to open. Now, if the photo is only going to be shown on the website, this is a Jeopardy question for you. The DPI should be what? Okay, we had. 300 if you're going to print it, 600 if you're going to scan it. On the web, it should be about 72. Oh, why so low? You want the pages to load quickly. And you want to find an images DPI in Windows. You look at the images property on a Mac, you use preview. Have you guys ever scanned any old photos? Many years ago with yeah. a bad old scanner, and it did not go so well for me. But I have to say now, Epson is a sponsor of the Kim Commando show. I'm not saying this because Epson's a sponsor, but because I used the fast photo scanner at the office, I had to scan a ton of documents. They were all different sizes, you know, all different shapes. It was incredible. It was so yeah, fast. It, it got them all. It I didn't have to arrange everything perfectly. It was, it was really, really great. Years ago. And I don't, I don't remember which brand it, brand it was, but I had all these boxes of photos that I was trying to get ready for. I think it was my mom's 50th birthday. And Oh man, there were so many, there were so many. And it seemed like, it, you know, I know it probably only took a few hours, but I like, in my memory, it was like a month, you know. So. You, you look like you're in pain talking about it, Ben. Are you all right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean it's, it's, I'm getting there. I'm getting better. But <laughs> well, you know what? Remind me, we're just not going to be talking about this ever again with Ben. <laughs> Allie, you and I can go back. You know, but it is a lot of fun to, to scan old photos. Like, you know, there was a, a photo of my parents at a wedding from the 19, I don't know, hundreds. Okay, not that long ago. <laughs> but I made a blanket out of it. And my mother just adored this blanket. She just totally loved it. So, you know, start thinking about gifts that will spark an emotion. And there's really nothing better than photos to do that. All right, so old photos that we're talking about, they make great gifts. I mean, how can you turn your pet or your partner into a painting that you'd see hanging, say, in Buckingham Palace? I mean, really think about this. 
Oh, speaking of, did you hear that a guy caused a blackout at Buckingham Palace? He stole the royal jewels. Oh, <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Hey, listen, coming up, you want to stay right where you are because we're going to be talking about some really great gifts and that whole royal thing I'm telling, going to tell you about. Allie's back with some tips on how to hide sensitive photos. Mm, you know you might have some, and maybe it's just your ID. And then Ben's going to tell us how to make sure that we never, ever lose our photos, so stay right where you are. Welcome back to Kim Commando Explains. Allie, Ben, and I, we're talking about digital photos. And now, because it's the holidays, we want to use our photos as gifts. And so, Allie, you showed me a terrific site. Uh, what was the name of it? It's called Artifact Uprising. Now, let me preface with, I'm picky. I'm picky about what I display in my house. And I think a lot of photo gifts are kitschy sometimes tacky. <laughs> now I've, no, uh, I'm sorry. Say, I just, I mean, say the photo on the coaster. That's bad. <laughs> hey, <Come> for <laughs> some people, it's great. You know, getting a picture of your dog on a pillow. It's cute, but I don't want it in my living room. So I look for photo gifts that I would actually want to display and that I would give to people and they would say, wow, this is actually really beautiful. And this is the site I've been using for years. It's called Artifact Uprising. There's no affiliation here. I'm just telling it, telling you about it because I really like it. Now, they make beautiful ways to display photos. They have lots of different calendar options, um, prints, frames. They make really gorgeous photo books. So if there's a special occasion, you know, like a wedding or a birthday or something like that. Now, they're a little more expensive. So it's not, you know, $10 Costco photo calendar prices. It's going to be a little more, but it's not terrible. There's still decent prices for gifts. Like you're going to spend under 50 bucks. Um, so go look around. I think, you know, this is the time of year to get one. They always do a really good Black Friday sale. It's usually 20% off. Um, that should, it usually starts in mid-November. Uh, you can also enter your email address if you want to save 10%. And if you don't want to give your email to yet another site, I get it. You can put it in a burner email, but you will have to use it to create an account anyway. You know, let's talk about that for just a second. A few things that you mentioned. Um, the burner email. A lot of people don't realize that if you had a have a Gmail account, you could just type in your name, a plus sign, and then whatever is after it at Gmail. And all of a sudden you have a disposable email address that goes directly right into your inbox, which I think is just an amazing feat of technology. I mean, it's just <laughs> right up there at the top with the Tesla car that you're able to do that. And, you know, you mentioned that site, a couple of other sites, uh, MPix. I don't know if you ever used MPix. I've used them to create like photo collages. Uh, there's also personal creations. There's Shutterfly, of course, and, you know, a whole slew of them. But one of the tricks that I have found is that, of course, when you get to the site, they're going to say, if you give us your email address, you can save 15% or 20% on your first order. But an inside secret is that you load everything up in your cart, okay? And make sure that you get to the point where you give them your email address. Okay. Then you close the window, just close it down so you're not going to buy anything. And you have to wait, like, I don't know, a couple of hours, maybe eight hours. And then suddenly you're going to get a promotion in your inbox that says, <laughs> hey, you left something in your cart. And you're like, oh, gosh, facepalm me. I didn't even realize I did that. That and is it may genius. Be better. It may be better than just the options that you're giving. Like, for example, I will tell you personal experience, that website, personalcreations.com, where you can put a photo, like you said, it's kitschy, on anything that you can think of is that if you leave, I guarantee you, you leave that stuff in the cart in just an hour or two, they're going to say, all right, how about 25% off? And you're like, oh, okay. Now I have tried doing it two or three times. I never get above the 25%. But of <laughs> course, there are those websites that you also want to use to save money when you're buying anything online. You want to use what? Just honey, because that's terrific. I mean, that's always going to save you some. Retail me not. Of course, there's tons of promo code sites. But you want to make sure that the worst thing you do is just type in promo code for a site and then you might end up at a scammer site. But uh, those are I, I, one of the things that I really like at, that you showed me uh, this morning out was that wooden block with yeah. you know, put 12 photos in. I'm, I think I think I'm, I'm going to really I'm going to get that for Ian because it kind of is like, you know, that hip you know, photo, you know, yeah, really photo clean and modern. I have a few around my house. They're just like a little block of wood with a, a space in it where you can put a little stack of photos. And it's fun too when people come over because they can take the stack, look through them, and put them back. So it's a cute little interactive way to show photos. 
So what about you, Ben? Well, not so much these days, but you mentioned like Impix and Shutterfly. One of the things we used to do is make, uh, we take the, the best family photos that we'd taken all year and then print like collage calendars with like the months corresponding with the months for the next year. And we'd send those to like the out of state relatives. Um, so we'd make oh, like three or four idea. of them. I mean, we don't do it as much anymore because the kids are, you know, my sons aren't small and cute anymore. So just, <laughs> they're big, tall, and and you know that ga- you know gawky type that stage that they're in. Yeah, exactly. Photoshop will not help, but uh, one of the things that has made kind of an interesting, fatherly love, um, an interesting gift idea for those, especially not exactly tech savvy, but they don't have to be. You remember digital photo frames? Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Did you think that they're gone? <laughs> because they're not. I know everybody can use their TV, their tablet, and all that to be basically become a photo frame, but some of the new standalones, including one that I reviewed a few months ago, it was called the Aura, A-U-R-A Carver. It is a totally Wi-Fi uh, photo frame, unlimited storage, and basically you just have to make sure whoever you're sending it to has Wi-Fi. But here's what's neat about it is you can set it up without opening it. Like you can leave the plastic on, you just basically scan this tiny little hidden QR code on the back, and then you can load it up with all these pictures and then send it as a gift. And when they open it up and they plug it in, connect it to the internet, all the pictures are there. And you can share the, uh, basically the, the address of the, of the frame through the app. So, you know, as long as you trust them, so you can have relatives wherever they are who can upload to this frame at any point and it's instantaneous. So see, that is so cool because you have anybody who has access to the frame. Of course you have to give them the address, then they can send photos to the frame. And it really is wonderful. I mean, if you have an older family member who's oh, maybe not all that tech savvy or even, you know, somebody who's not that old. I mean, if you have like a lot of pictures of kids and grandkids, it's really wonderful to bridge those miles. And even now we're still in this, what would you say we're still in the pandemic? Kind of, yeah. yeah, maybe, Officially, I mean. yeah, <laughs> you know, so, so it really does help bridge all the miles. And it's a, if you want to read Ben's review, it's over on the website. Now, last Christmas, I gave Barry a picture of Abby. Now, let me tell you about Abby. Abby is the golden retriever. Okay. And she's three years old now. And I, I think Ian said it best. If, if Abby was a girl, I should be worried. A human, because <laughs> she is in love with Barry, and Barry is in love <laughs> with the dog. Okay, just to give you some perspective, we have the Fi dog collar on her, the tra- Fi tracker, but that's not enough. She also has the Apple AirTag on her. So I guess if she lose her collar, <laughs> we would have two places to find the collar. And I must hear at least three times an hour. I'm not kidding you. Where's Abby? Where's Abby? Where's Abby? You know, <laughs> And so... So I, so I had Abby, I took a picture of Abby and I found a vendor over on Etsy and what they do is they take the picture of the dog and then they put it on like, like she was like this royal princess. And so it's the dog's face on this canvas with the, you know, that just looked amazing. And of course I gave it to Barry and he's like, wow, this is great. And he wanted to put it up in the living room. I'm like, "Mm, I'm not really seeing this in the living room. It might go more into your study or the man cave. So I found a website called TurnMeRoyal.com, and for about seventy, eighty dollars, they'll take a picture of someone you know, and they'll turn it into like, and even pets, like princesses and princes and all different type of kings and queens and everything like that. So initially, I was thinking I was going to take a picture of Barry and turn him into a king, but now in retrospect, I think what I'm going to do is take a picture of me, turn me into a queen, and then give him that for Christmas. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, if he's got Abby, he's got to have you too. Well, I'll tell you, it just reminds me, my sister was remodeling her house. This was something really quick and really mean that I did. So she was <laughs> remodeling her living room and, and she, it was a big deal. I mean, you know, they had to take down walls and put in new supporting beams. And, you know, she'd call me in every weekend and give me a progress report or FaceTime me to show me like what color the walls were and, and she was afraid to buy any type of furniture because she wanted to make sure that matched. And I said, listen, before you buy any furniture, let me find a nice piece of art for you. 
Hang on, let me find you something that's really, really good. And uh, she said, oh, you know, and, okay, she said, I'm not going to buy any furniture until you give me the piece of art. Okay, and I'm going to say, this is your Christmas present. It's going to be a big deal. And just what colors are you looking for? And I said, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, about that same time, I was, I don't know, talk woman of the year or something like that. And, and on the stage, they had this big 16 <laughs> by 20 portrait of me, right? Okay, so I get an easel. And I, I go to her house and I put the picture there and I put a white cloth over it. And I explain to her that this is something she's going to treasure forever. She's going to hand down from generation to generation. <laughs> and they're all sitting there on folding chairs because there's no couch <laughs> waiting for this. <laughs> I, I say, OK, so it's time for the big reveal. And I, I take the sheet off and there's this picture of me smiling <laughs> was it pure silence or did she start yelling at you <laughs> she looked at me she was shocked <laughs> shocked and she looks at me and she goes i can't believe you did this i don't have any furniture because i was waiting for this and she's like her face is all red and and her husband just walked out of the room <laughs> <laughs> How then, long did it take you to get her the real painting? <laughs> well, what did we finish before that? <laughs> my other sister, who's like, says the rosary and she's all rainbows, ponies and flowers. And she says, that is beautiful. I would love to have that in my oh. living room. <laughs> uh, the only yeah. time that beat that was when it was her birthday and I she was turning 50 and I put 50 pink flamingos on her front lawn. <laughs> You're a prankster, Cam. Who knew? That's what I was going to say. No one that, suspected in advance that you had no, done something no, like that. No, no, no. Nobody knew. It was really, really quite amazing. If you want more ideas for your photo guests, we've got a ton of write-ups over at commando.com. That's with a K, of course. All right. Stay right where you are. Coming right up, we're going to talk about how you can hide sensitive photos. You know, like if you just hand somebody your phone and then they start going through your photo gallery and you're like, oh, don't go too far back, okay? That would not be good for me or you. And Ben's going to be talking about how to back up all your photos. We have that and a lot more coming up. Hey, welcome back to Kim Commando Explains. Ali, Ben, and I were talking about digital photography. It reminds me of a story. A photographer goes to a haunted castle determined to get a picture of a ghost on Halloween. And the ghost he encounters turn out to be really friendly and just poses for a snapshot. And the photographer is so excited. He gets all his photos and he's thinking about how he's going to put them on social media. And then he looks at his phone and he finds that the photos are underexposed and some are just completely blank and the moral of the story the spirit is willing but the flash was weak oh <laughs> come on work with me on this uh so ally hiding sensitive photos where do we even start and we're not even going to define sensitive well we i mean no you can you know take your mind where it goes i know what comes to mind when i say that there's no judgment, but there is also a lot that you just might not want other people to see, like your ID. Like you said, Kim, you wrote a really great column about photos you should have on your phone, your insurance cards, your license plate, your all your ID, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, if you're just handing somebody your phone or, heaven forbid, your phone gets lost, you don't want somebody to very easily be able to have access to, I don't know, your driver's license. So we can hide these things. There are third-party apps for it. I'm not going to go into that because I think it's better when you can just use the things that are built right into your phone to do it so you're not downloading one more thing. Now, for an iPhone, I think the best choice is to use the Notes app. And I am always blown away by how handy this simple little app is. You create a new note, you attach the photo, and then you can set a password on it. And you can put as many photos as you want. Um, the steps to do this, even more in-depth, are on our site. We actually have some even more good tips for the notes app on an iPhone. You can also make a hidden folder. Now this isn't going to lock your photos with a password. And if somebody goes snooping and they really are, you know, they really want to find things, they can find it, but at least they're not going to be in your general gallery view. So this is good for, you know, just those snoopy people in your life. If they say, Hey, can I use your phone real quick? And you won't have to feel like, Oh no, what are they going to scroll to? 
Again, yeah, right. <laughs> all the steps for that are on commando.com. But basically, once you get into your photo gallery, way down at the bottom, there'll be a folder that says hidden, and that's where those go. Now, if you have a Samsung, good news, you can password protect folders right there natively. This is nice. You go to the settings, and then in your security settings, you're going to go to secure folder. And with this, you can set a password on it. And then that way, once you go through your gallery, you can add anything you want to it. Once again, I know, broken record, go to commando.com, search hide photos, and you'll find the steps for all this stuff so you don't have to remember it. Now, this is one more interesting thing. Google Photos, they have a locked photo feature. Right now, it's only available on Pixel, but it is going to come to the iPhone early next year. And it's coming to the rest of Android phones pretty soon. But this in Google Photos, if you use that, it's another just native way to lock down photos so you can password protect um, anything that you want. You know, speaking of photos, you need to have your vaccination card right on your phone. I mean, that's just something that you need to have your vaccination card right on your phone. And there are different ways that you can do it. You can put it in notes, but now you can actually get inside your wallet. So you can put it inside your Apple wallet. You can put it inside your Samsung wallet. But I think this is so interesting that with Apple, you can't get it into the wallet unless you have a QR code of your vaccination <laughs> card. It's like, what is happening with that? And you mentioned that column nine photos that you need to have on your phone. And we got all kinds of really great responses from that. You know, I never thought about like taking a picture of my license plate. Okay. Or your VIN number or these, your insurance cards, whatever it may be. And then you put them all inside your phone so that you have everything right in, right within reach. But there was that one guy on Twitter and he tweeted out like, that was the stupidest column oh, I've ever no. written in my entire life. Wow. <laughs> well, that's not like, He must have been having a bad day. I thought it was pretty I, darn helpful. <laughs> I thought it was pretty darn good too. Um, all right, Ben, let's talk about not losing our important photos. Okay. You don't just keep the photos in one place. I, I learned that a long time ago after a hard drive crash, and this is years and years ago, but, you know, it all comes down to a couple factors, one being how much space do you need? And if you have a ton of scanned photos and you have, a you know, just an equal amount of photos that you've been taking on your phone, you could have thousands of thousands of photos and you could require gigs of storage space. But again, you have the choice. You can do cloud storage. Or you can do, you know, local storage, like an external hard drive or a thumb drive, things like that. But we'll kind of go into that a little bit. It, one of the things it comes down to is, are you already on an ecosystem? Like if you're, if you're using an iPhone and you have a Mac, you know, whatever else, probably a good idea that you use iCloud if you already pay for yeah. it. Back up and your photos a, you know that what, way. That, and, you know, that's a really good point, Ben, is that if you're on this, and we call it the ecosystem, whether it's your smart home, whatever it may be. If you've got everything on your Mac, you've got everything on your phone. You know what? I know that you can do different things. You can put it on a hard drive, but what? Hard drives die. You can put it on a thumb drive. Worst idea ever. Okay. But you just want to stick with the iCloud because it costs you a couple of bucks a month and that's it. Like a friend of mine is the fire chief here in Santa Barbara. And he texts me and says, you know, what kind of Windows desktop should I buy? And I call him up. I'm like, Dave. Windows desktop? Are you like kidding me? You have an iPhone. Okay. okay. Well, you know, last night at seven o'clock, I was setting up his MacBook Air. Okay. And, you know, and but he's looked at it. And he's like, so I have a photo that I just saved on my phone in text message, and it automatically appeared on my MacBook Air. It was like magic, magic, <laughs> just magic. And so, so Ben, but you know, the point being that things are set up to work for a reason. And let's not try to, you know, make things too difficult. It costs you a couple of bucks a month. Just do it. Yeah. And same thing if you are on, you know, if you use Windows and maybe you have an Android phone, you know, an option is Google Photos, but knowing what Google keeps track of, um, you know, you've got similar pricing. It's 10 bucks a month. I think it's, it's similar to iCloud, 10 bucks a month for like two terabytes, which that's a lot of storage. Um, but it doesn't, uh, iDrive, which is, is one of our show sponsors, they actually, they don't have a free tier, like, you know, the five gigabytes, some of the others, but uh, current deal right now through the site is that uh, you can get five terabytes of storage 
uh, for 40 bucks for the first year. And that's for all the devices that backs up. And that's not just photos, but you know, staying with it, where, however many photos you have on your phone or saved on a computer that you can store all of those there, um, through their cloud service. But again, I would suggest having a redundant copy. I, you know, for me, I back these things up on an external SSD, not the, not the old style spinny hard drives and not a thumb drive because how easy are those things to lose? Seriously. They can hold so much. And and how how many do you have in your desk that you have no idea what's on them? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're sitting at the bottom of your pen holder or something. You don't even know it's there. And it's probably got, you know, a thousand photos on it or something. So, yeah, put it on a drive that you're not going to easily lose. You know, maybe something that just fits in a drawer. But um, so that's what I do. Anytime I'm backing these things up, I make sure I've just I have a redundant copy just in case something happens. So, And that's it. You know, redundancy is key. And I just looked this up because I was just curious. Um, let me ask you both because I didn't know the answer. Assuming that the average size photo is 500K, how many photos could you get in a one terabyte hard drive? Oh, Kim, don't make us do math like this. This is embarrassing (laughs) for everyone involved. (laughs) Okay. All right. I had to look it up. Uh, Two million photos. Two million photos. Okay. So I think you'll be okay. (laughs) I think think it'll be all right. I guess that's pretty low res, but wow. You're not taking your photos in raw. Unless a, you're an Instagram influencer, then you probably are doing that in a month. <laughs> I have a quick little money saving tip too, based on what uh, Ben said. So for a lot of these cloud storage, they have you pay monthly and they want you to do that because you'll pay more, but there's always the option too. You can pay annually. And I looked it up for Google photos, which is what I use. And I think it was like 20 bucks less a year if I just paid one time annually. So it's worth looking into for whatever you use. I know the 99 cents or the $1.99 a month, you don't even think about it. But if you can save a little bit of money, it might be worth it. And then don't forget with your Amazon account, right? You get five gigs of free photo storage there. Or is it unlimited? It's I believe it's un- unlimited. Yeah, it's unlimited. Um, yeah, and it's only five gigs for videos, but unlimited for photos. Uh, just, okay, all right. Yeah, just don't, you know, if you cancel your Prime membership, though, remember <laughs> that it's going to go back to the five. <laughs> gigs for, across the board. I got it. All right. So that's where the five gigs came from. So that that's another perk of your Amazon Prime account. All right. So this is all great stuff. You know, my neighbors, the Razzies, they have more family photographs hanging on their walls than anybody who I know. I mean, it's all thanks to their dad. Their dad's known as Papa Razzie. Oh, <laughs> he got me guys. with that one. <laughs> All right, Allie and Ben, thanks for joining us and telling us all your photo secrets. And don't forget, if you want to know more, you can always take a look over at commando.com. And here, I want you to try something. Take a look at your phone and just see how many photos and videos that you have. You might have, I don't know, a few thousand. I looked, I have almost 27,000. And it's just so easy to take these photos, but it's harder to decide what you don't want to use. So use the Marie Kondo method. Look at each photo and ask yourself, does it spark joy? Does it spark joy? And if it's just a picture of spaghetti and it's not sparking joy, then just put it in the trash. Just get rid of it. There's no sense. It's no sense having it sitting on your phone and then you're paying to have it stored in the cloud. And speaking of sparking joy, of course, every Kim Commando Explains podcast does that. And so that's why we always want to remind you to rate, review, subscribe, and follow the podcast because that's how we find more listeners and more followers and good things like that. And hey, just another reminder. If you learn just one thing from this entire podcast, make sure that you mention that one thing in the reviews. It always helps when you can write something nice. And as your mother said, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And again, you can find more photo tips over at commando.com. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. And thanks for listening.